This is lesson 23 in module 3. In this lesson, we'll be using division and the associative property to test for factors. Let's start by looking at the problem 28 divided by 7 equals 4. We know because we know the relationship between division and multiplication, we know that the number sentence four, seven times four equals 28 is also in the same fact family. So therefore, we know that seven and four are factors of 28. So these two numbers multiplied together give us 28, therefore they are factors of 28. Let's try a different one. Let's say we want to know is 3 a factor of 54? Well one we way we can do that is to divide 54 by 3 and if we get a whole number answer with no remainder, we'll know that both 3 and the quotient are factors of 54. So let's try that. I have 5 tens. I can put 1 in each group of 3. I subtract. I have 2 tens left. I add the 4 ones that I already have. I now have 24. 3 times 8 is 24. And when I subtract, there's no remainder. Therefore, 3 and 18 are both factors of 54. Now let's see if 2 is a factor of 54. Again, we can say 54 divided by 2. I can put two tens in each group. 2 times 2 is 4 with one ten remaining plus the four ones. I have 14 ones. I can put 7 in each group with no remainder. So both 2 and 27 are factors of 54. Let's try another one. We've looked at 2 and 3. Let's see if 5 is a factor of 54. Now we know when we divide, we're putting things together into equal size groups. So another thing I could do to figure out if 5 is a factor is count by 5's, making equal size groups. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 50, 55, and I've now gone past my dividend, and I never said 54, so 5 isn't a factor of 54. I also notice that when I'm counting by 5s, each number in the 1s place has at either a 0 or 5. So that's an easy way right away to determine if 5 is a factor of a number because if the dividend we're looking at or the number we're looking at doesn't end in a 0 or 5, then 5 isn't a factor. Let's see, is 2 a factor of 54 using this method? We already know it is because we tried in the last one, but let's count by 2's. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And we start to see a pattern here. When we're counting by twos, in the ones place, there's always a two, a four, a six, an eight, or a 10. We call those numbers even. Numbers with a 2 in the 1's place 
a 4, a 6, an 8, or a 0 are even numbers. So if we see the number that we're looking at has an even number in the ones place, we know 2 is always a factor. So 54 has a 4 in the ones place, so we know that 2 has to be a factor. Let's look at another one. <clears throat> now we're going to ask, is 6 a factor of 54? Well, we first look to see whether or not 6 times something is something we know from our math facts. And in fact, 6 times 9 is 54. Therefore, both 6 and 9 are factors of 54. We also know that 3 is a factor of 54 from the problem we just did. So we can use another strategy called the associative property, where we're going to say 54 is equal to 6 times 9. We're going to rewrite 6 as 2 times 3 because we're trying to show that 3 is a factor. So we've just taken 6 and rewritten it as 2 times 3. Then we're going to group, by using the associative property, we're going to group 3 this time with the 9 instead of with the 2. In multiplication, we can change the grouping. That's called the associative property. We're now associating the 3 with the 9 instead of with the 2. Then when we solve this, we see 2 times 27, and that is 54. So that also shows us that 3 is a factor of 54 as well as 2. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at 72, and we want to know if 6 is a factor. Well, we know from our math facts that 6 times 12 is 72. So both 6 and 12 are factors of 72. Now we're going to check and see whether 3 is also a factor. So we're going to use our associative property. We're going to change. 6 into 2 times 3, because we're looking to see whether 3 is a factor. Then I can associate 3 with the 12 now. And when I multiply, I get 72. So now I know both 2 and 3 are factors of 72. I could have told that 2 was right away because there's that even number in the 1's place. I could also show it with division by 3 dividing 72. I have 7 tens, so if I put 2 in each group, I've used 6 tens, 1 left, plus the 2 1's. I can divide 12 into groups of 3 with 4 in each group with 0 remainder. So that tells me that 24 is also a factor of 72 because both my divisor and my quotient are going to be factors since 24 times 3 equals 72. So I also know that 1 and 72 are factors. All right, let's use what we've learned to try some problems in our problem set. So this says explain your thinking or use division to answer the following. Take a minute and do 1A. Well, this is an easy one because we th see that on the number we're looking at, 84 has a 4 in the 1's place, which is even, so we automatically know that 2 is a factor. So 84 is even, 
so two is a factor. Take a minute and pause the video and do B. Okay, first we use our easy rule, but we see that in the ones place is a three, it's not even, so we can't assume that two is a factor. We can't also assume it's not a factor, so let's try division. 83 divided by two. <coughs> two times four is eight. No what tens left, but three ones. I'm dividing three into two groups. And I have a remainder. So that tells me that two is not a factor. Because I can't multiply anything times two. The closest I can get is 41, but that only gives me 82. I have a remainder, so it's not a factor. Try C. Okay, let's divide 84 divided by 3. Two tens, two tens remaining, plus four ones. Now I have 24. Three times eight is 24, no remainder. So yes, three and 28 are factors. Try D, pause the video. Okay, this is another one of those easy ones. There's a two in the ones place, which is even, so I know two is a factor. So two is a factor because 92 is even. Pause the video and try num number uh, letter E. Okay, let's do, use division here. 84 divided by six. I can put 110 in each group. Two tens are left, plus four ones is 24. Four times six is 24 with zero remainder. So six is a factor. Because six times 14 equals 84. So that would also mean that 14 is a factor. Try F, pause the video. Okay, let's divide 92. Put two in each group. 110 left, plus the two ones. I now have 12 ones. I can divide that by three with zero remainder. So four is a factor. Because 23 times 4 equals 92. Try G. Okay, this is another one of those easy ones. We know if 5 is a factor, then the number we're looking at has to have either a 0 or a 5 in the 1's place, but it doesn't. So 5 is not a factor. because 84 doesn't have zero or five in the ones place. Okay, pause the video and try H. 92 divided by eight. 110 in each group. 110 plus two ones is 12. I can put one in each group and I have a remainder of four. So that tells me is eight is not a factor because I can't divide with and end up with no remainder. Okay, let's go on to number two. Now we're gonna use the associative property 
So pause the video and take a moment to do both A and B. Okay, for here it got us started. I can de uh, decompose 12 into 4 times 3. Then I can use the associative property to move my parentheses and associate the 3 with the 2 instead of with the 4. 3 times 2 is 6 and 4 and my product is 24. So that tells me that both 4 and 3 as well as the 6 are factors of 24. For B, 36 is 9 times 4. I can decompose 9 into 3 times 3. I can associate the second 3 with a 4 to get 12. 3 times 12 is 36, so that tells me that 3, 4, 9, and 12 are all factors of 36. Pause the video and try number 3. Okay, for this one we're using associative property and we're using the fact that 8 equals 4 times 2 to show that both 2 and 4 are factors. So we have 56 equals, and we're going to decompose uh, 8 into 4 times 2. Then we're going to move our parentheses and regroup using the associative property. That equals 56, so that shows that both 4, that 4 is a, and 2 are factors. Let's do the same thing for 72 equals 4 times 2 times 9. We move our parentheses. We solve. Okay, so 4 and 2 are both factors. And then finally for 80, we're decomposing 8 into 4 times 2. We're associating the 2 now with the 10 instead of with the 4. And now we see that both 4 and 2 are factors. Finally, let's look at number four. <clears throat> Pause the video and see what you can do with this one. Okay, this tells us that the first statement is false. If a number has two and four as factors, then it has eight as a factor. Well, let's think of a number that has two and four as factors. An easy one is four. So, because four equals one times four, it also equals 2 times 2. So 1, 2, and 4 are factors. But clearly 8 is not a factor. Let's look at another one. Let's look at 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. So both 2 and 4 are factors. But 8 is not a factor of 12. There's nothing I can multiply by 8 and get 12. So we've shown that this one is false. On the other hand, if 8 is a factor, then both 2 and 4 are factors. So let's take a number that has 8 as a factor. Let's do 16 equals 2 times 8. Using the associative property, we can change two 8 into 2 times 4. Since we're interested in both 2 and 4 as factors, if we multiply, we get back to 16. So both 2 and 4 are factors if 8 is a factor. And that's the end of Lesson 23.